Hey everybody, it's Brayden. Today's video is a new military spouse um, survival guide, the do's, the don'ts, and all the things that you need to know um, while you start this new journey. So if you are interested in that, keep watching. Okay guys, so I have a little list. Um, I just kind of jotted down a few do's and don'ts. I already kind of knew what I was gonna talk about, but I jotted it down. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna get right into it. So for my first one on my do's column, uh, it's get involved. So there's so many um, programs and uh, groups on social media like Facebook and stuff for military spouses. Every installation has a military spouse Facebook group. Um, get involved in that. There's PWC, which is Protestant Women of Christ. Um, most of every military installation is going to have um, a PWOC chapter. So if you're a Christian woman, that is such a great way. And even if you're not really, I mean, it's a great way to get involved. Um, I'm sure that they all do it differently at different places, but here at Fort Sam Houston, um, that group is really great. They meet in the mornings um, and that might not be the best for everybody. Some of you guys probably work and can't make that happen. But if you are a stay at home mom or um, you haven't yet found a job or maybe you don't work in the mornings, um, it's definitely a great way to get involved um, and just kind of fellowship with some fellow ladies. I met a lot of great ladies for my first week on post and it made me feel a lot better. Um, you really build a sense of community through those things. So um, just get involved, put yourself out there, even if you're shy or introverted, you know, you don't have family and friends here. It, well, wherever you are, <laughs> I don't have family and friends here, but wherever you are, um, you're not gonna have that support system that you did back home, but you can still create it. And you will soon find out that in the military world, everybody is a family and watches out for one another because we're all in the same boat um, and, and everybody's really supportive. So yeah. Uh, the next tip, this is a don't, um, don't go to the commissary, which is the grocery store on post or base or wherever. Um, the grocery store do not show up without cash. If you do, um, definitely get some cash, uh, from the register after you purchase your goodies because the baggers are working for tips and tips only. They don't get any other paycheck besides their tips. Um, so if, if you're new to all of this, it might be a little um, weird to see people bagging your groceries and then trying to take them out to your car for you. And if you're anything like me, you're gonna look like a complete jerk multiple times because you're not sure what's going on. And um, yeah, so they are gonna bag your groceries for you. They are going to take them out to your car. They don't have to, you can tell them no, but you, you kind of look like a jerk if you do that. Um, and I know because I've done it, um, because I did not know what I was doing. Um, but yeah, they do work for tips. So, you know, depending on how much groceries you purchased, you can give a couple of dollars or a five or whatever you feel led to give. Um, the only way you can get around that is if you go through the self-checkout, which I don't recommend because the self-checkout machines at commissaries don't really work that well. Um, they're very buggy. Uh, or you can go through the express lane, which is like five, 15 items or less, but there's still somebody bagging your groceries and so you still tip the person bagging the groceries. This is just across the board. If it makes you uncomfortable, then you'll probably need to look elsewhere for your grocery shopping needs. But if you do go to the commissary, know that that is expected of you. Another thing, um, you have to have your military ID card, your dependent ID card to buy anything on post. So, or we're, we're on a mili an army post. So we say post, but air force says like base, whatever. So wherever you're at, whether it be the exchange or the commissary, you're going to have to scan your ID card. They will scan it for you before you can purchase anything. So always have your ID card. Um, one of my don'ts was never leave without your ID card always have it on you, get in the habit of keeping it on you at all times because you obviously have to have it to get on and off post. So don't forget that. Um, you, you're not in trouble if you do forget and you can't get back on post, but you're gonna have to go to the visitor center and get a visitor's pass and it's a process. So just 
make sure you always have your ID card on you and you'll stay out of all of those problems. Um, my second do was uh, seek, adventure, explore. So get out of your area and go find new cool things. Um, eat at nice restaurants, like new places. Just, just get out and explore, really. I mean, that's the coolest part about the military life is getting to explore new places. So take advantage of that. Um, find local, you know, places and fun things to do with your family and get out and make the most of it because um, you're not gonna be there forever, so you might as well soak it all in while you're there. Um, my next don't, uh, this is kind of a big one for me, is if you if you sell anything, if you do any kind of multi-level marketing or, um, or direct sales, um, which is kind of like a common thing with military spouses, I don't do anything like that, but it is very common. If you do that, don't message people in the spouse groups, you know, trying to sell stuff. It, it does seem like a great way to make sales, but I promise you that everybody's getting the same messages over and over and over and over. And the worst part about being a military spouse um, and being new somewhere is when you think somebody wants to make a connection with you, but in reality, they're just trying to sell you something. Same goes for like the college reps and things like that. Like it can be a bit overwhelming. I've met a lot of great um, reps for some of the educational programs and things like that through the military um, that will message you and ask you about that. I have met some great ladies. They're not bad ladies, but they they do, um, they will message you and I get messages at least once a day or more. So, and I have a college degree. It doesn't apply to me. I don't need it, um, but I still get messages all the time and, and it is, a bit annoying um, so yeah don't be that person just if you're selling something put it out there if people are interested they'll come to you don't don't prey on people um, especially military spouses that are new and just trying to make friends because um, it's just not nice and it's it, it doesn't do well for you like nobody nobody's a fan of that <laughs> So it, just don't do, don't do that. And if, and, and be prepared, if you're a new spouse, you're going to get messages. People are going to try to sell you stuff and all of that, especially once you get in new spouse groups, be nice and move on and, and just let it be. But just know that it is, you know, it's more prevalent in the military community. Um, my next thing is stay in touch with your friends and family. I know this seems like an obvious thing, but once you move, it can sometimes be a bit harder to stay in contact, especially with friends maybe. Um, so just make sure you're always going out of your way to connect with um, those that are back home, that you um, still are putting an effort like you would if you were there, FaceTime as your best friend, plan lots of trips. Um, well, not lots of trips, but plan trips and, and uh, yeah, just stay connected. So the next on my list for don'ts is don't go overboard with military wife stuff. Um, I'm not trying to be rude to anybody. If you are excited, that's great. I'm a new spouse. I am excited. I have Air Force wife stuff. I have the shirts. I have the decal. I have a cup or two so I get it you're excited and, and you want to shout it from the rooftop you're so so proud of your spouse and that's great but just don't go overboard with it because I promise you once the newness wears off you're gonna have a closet full of military wife stuff and you're just like everybody here is military wife you know what I mean I'm not trying to squash your excitement by any means get the cute shirt get the cute cup all of that but just don't go overboard with it um, you don't need like 60 cows on your car saying that you're a military spouse. You don't need all that. I mean, it's exciting in the beginning, but once it wears off a little bit and this becomes a reality for you and your spouse, um, you'll feel silly wearing all that stuff around. Um, so yeah, get the cute stuff, get the cute shirt, whatever, but just don't go overboard because there's gift shops that have all of the stuff, all of the things, especially at Lackland. Um, and you know, it's kind of, you'll kind of get joked about with, you know, your your husband's like shop or whatever. Um, they'll kind of give you a hard time if you're always that wife that's like raw, raw, Air Force, raw, raw, whatever. So be proud 
wear the cute stuff, but just don't go overboard. Um, my next one is learn to go with the flow and stay positive. Any military spouse is gonna tell you to plan, plan, change your plans, plan, plan, change your plans again. Um, the military is, it, you would think it's the most organized thing ever, but it's not. Um, everything can kind of go haywire up at the last minute. Um, any spouse will tell you that. They are all gonna have stories, multiple stories about how they thought this was gonna happen and then it didn't and then instead this happened. Uh, so you just gotta learn to go with flow. If you're like me and you're a planner and you like sure things, you're gonna do some growing because uh, that is just not the reality anymore. But that's okay, it's exciting um, in a way as well. So it's a good way to mature and grow in that area of your life to learn how to uh, roll with the punches and um, problem solve quick. Um, the next thing on my don'ts is don't get into drama. If you are on the spouse pages, that's great. Like I said, a great tool to get connected, but don't get involved in any drama. It's military world, especially depending on branch is a smaller world world than you would think um you know things get around quick and it can be petty and silly and um, i haven't experienced any of it yet uh thank god but just don't just stay out of it be nice to people and and just be happy be happy don't don't get involved in things um so on my do list, my husband, I actually asked him, I was like, what things do you think I should add? Um, and he said, um, do be a support to your spouse. So, um, you know, of course your spouse needs to support you as well, but this is a big, um, a big adventure for you both. And your spouse is, is more than likely going to be dealing with a lot of new things, um, that you're not even going to have to deal with yourself. So just be supportive, um, trying to be positive. Like I said, with whatever comes y'all's way, um, just take it in stride and enjoy the ride. Um, don't do anything to get your spouse in trouble. Uh, military life is a bit different. Um, whatever you do affects your spouse. Whatever your spouse does affects them. So it all comes back to the spouse. Um, so if you live on post or you're on post or whatever, don't speed, don't, don't do anything to break the law because it's not like normal civilian world where you get a ticket and you move on or you get a warning and you move on. It's gonna go up his chain of command or her chain of command or whatever. Um, so don't, don't do anything to get your spouse in trouble. That kind of goes along with the don't start drama, don't be involved in drama because it, there's a hierarchy here and things will move up to people and it can get blown out of proportion in a way that you don't want it to be. Um, so yeah, just don't, don't fight over toilet paper at the commissary. Don't get involved in drama. Don't flip people off when you're driving. It could be the general's wife. I don't know who the general is or there's multiple of them. It doesn't matter, just don't. Just don't get anybody in trouble, especially your spouse. Stay out of drama, I promise. Your life will be better. Um, OPSEC and PERSEC. So OPSEC, you'll see people talking about throwing these acronyms around. I would love to give you a rundown of all the acronyms, but I halfway don't know what any of them mean either. But um, operational security is OPSEC. Per sec is personal security. So basically, in a nutshell, don't share too much. Don't share exact dates of moves. Um, if your uh, spouse is deployed, don't share days, dates of arrival. Um, no specifics, just don't be specific. Um, you can do that with family um, to a degree. Like I said, even if they're deployed, don't. nobody needs to know exactly when they're coming home or, or um, or anything like that. Just don't share those details. You can share um, details around it. You can say, well, we're moving around this time or whatever, but you just have to kind of be more careful because there is a level of security that, that your spouse has to maintain. So um, if you're not sure, don't share. The best thing you can do is look it up, ask, make sure before you share anything on your social media that it's not um, something that you're not allowed to share. So just be aware of that. Don't let it scare you. But if you're not shared, if you're not sure, don't share, find out, then share. Because chances are, if you're leery about sharing information, it's probably information that you shouldn't be sharing. Um, good chance. Uh, so <laughs> my other do from Josh was bake, cook, bake slash cook for their shop or their unit or 
um, their class if they're a tech school or whatever. Um, they, the guys like really enjoy, and there's girls as well, but um, Josh is just with mostly guys, um, but they do enjoy getting a little special treat and it definitely makes their day um, and if you have the time it's nice to just go out of your way and do that for them um, it definitely gives them a little bit of brownie points um, not much <laughs> but it definitely brightens everybody's day and it just makes you feel like you're involved um, to some degree so yeah um, my don't is don't freak out when plans change I kind of already touched base on that um, just going with the flow so yeah just kind of get used to plans changing, um, your family might get angry with you when you have to change plans all the time, but it's just the, the nature of the beast and you have to kind of get used to going with the flow and, and having a lot of maybes and up in the air things, but it's okay. It's all good. You'll survive. You'll figure it out. It'll be fine. Um, my last thing, if you're not around military installations every day at 530 um, on the weekdays, they do play the national anthem or depending on the um, base that you're at they'll play some sort of um, patriotic song um, and at 5 30 everything stops if your spouse is in uniform it, whether it's their dress uniform their fatigues or their um, uh, pt ensemble it doesn't matter uh, they will have to stop and salute um, if you are in your car driving you will have to stop you don't need to move over to the side of the road you just have to stop um, until the music's done Make sure you're looking at the time if you're out in the evenings because there is a good chance that you might not hear the music if you're in your car and you're gonna look silly driving around while the music's playing. So just be aware of that. Um, the music plays in the morning too. I don't think that anyone has to stop for that. I, I don't know, I'm not out that early, but um, yeah, there's loudspeakers. So if you're living on bass or post or whatever, you're gonna hear music and voices and things, well, that sounds really creepy. There's like a, a emergency alert system. The guy is really super creepy that does the, it's like an automated voice. Um, so yeah, just, hi. <laughs> Get in here. Hi, you know. Hi. So just be aware that, yeah, yeah, that there are loudspeakers yeah, and they do the make noise. Are you talking? I'm talking, yeah. So yeah, but pretty much that's it guys. Um, if there's something that I didn't cover and you're a spouse, a seasoned spouse, and I didn't cover, let me know. I'm sorry this is a very long video, but if you are a new spouse, you'll probably appreciate all the tips. I hope at least. So yeah, I think that's all for this video, guys. Um, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you're not already. I post videos every Monday and Friday. Ah. <laughs> and I will see you guys in my next upload. Bye. Say bye. 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 <laughs>